Hi, thank you for joining my channel. Today we're going to talk about jet lag and how that affects our bodies and how we can try to mitigate those symptoms. For me, I know that when I travel to uh, Europe, I don't know, when I go east, I find that I'm able to recover a lot faster. But what the literature says is when you go west, it's more difficult. So I have about eight different tips that I can share with you and try to mitigate that terrible feeling of jet lag. So what is jet lag? You know, jet lag is when your body is on a different circadian rhythm than the time zone that you're in. So what they say is every time zone you pass is it takes a day to recover. So from California to New York, Nico is spicy today. From California to New York, there are four time zones. We have Pacific, we have mountain, we have central, and we have east. So it would take, it would be three time zones to get from California to the east coast. Europe, they have four time zones as well, so it takes a while. But you can, you can mitigate those uh, symptoms of feeling extremely tired, fatigued, you can't sleep at night, you have a little fogginess in your head, you just can't, you know, you just kind of feel zoned out. Um, some other symptoms are um, you have digestive problems, um, sometimes you can get constipation, you just feel yucky, you can't just fly into uh, your destination and then feel good because you are so tired and you want to catch up and you want to feel better. So I'm going to share about eight different tips with you and um, you can let me know what you think, uh, what your experiences have been with jet lag. And I'm sorry this is so disruptive, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> I need to let him calm down a little bit. You know, he's really wanting to play as soon as I sit down to do this. But anyway, I'm going to share eight tips with you. Tip one is to try to get yourself adjusted before you actually get on the plane, which means, you know, changing the way that you sleep a little bit and the way that you eat. Because you want to make sure that your food cycle and your sleeping cycle can easily get adjusted because that's the biggest issue. So those are the things that you want to try to do maybe before you get on the plane. Um, I know for me, when I have gone to Europe, if I leave late, like I take the three o'clock flight here and I land in the morning, the chances are likely that I can uh, sleep because if it's during the day, I can't sleep. So taking a sleep aid is super helpful. Um, they say to take a little bit of melatonin when you get to the destination, if you can take melatonin, because melatonin does not work for me. And But it does work really well for other people. Take a very small dose of melatonin as soon as it gets dark in the location that you're getting at, because you want to try to get your sleep and your eating schedule back on track. For me, if I sleep on the plane, even for two to three hours, I can manage to get through the jet lag, but if I don't sleep on the plane and I'm up for like almost 24 hours, then I definitely have a hard time. So that was one tip. Take a sleep aid, melatonin, try to sleep on the plane, set your clock to the time that zone that you're going to be so you can start trying to pay attention to the time and uh, see if you can get a jump start on uh, changing your circadian rhythm. Tip number two is get sun. When you're in your location, uh, when you finally get to your destination and it's during the day, do what you can to get out in that sun because like melatonin is good for sleeping, um, the sun helps your circadian rhythm for the daytime. So if you can get into the sun and as soon as you can, it, it will help adjust your, your body. Um, but of course, if you're up for 24 hours, that's a kind of a different story if you haven't gotten any sleep. But try not to take a nap for too long if you do, but go out, get some sun, and try to recalibrate your body. That's tip number two. Get out in the sun. 
So tip number three is to drink a lot of water. And the adage is, have fun, stay in the sun, and drink a gallon of water a day to help you get through that. When you travel, your body needs more water. More water than you can imagine, really. So you need to drink a lot of water. And I know there's a lot of people that don't like to drink a lot of water on the airplanes because then they have to use the restroom. But you know what? Doesn't matter. Drink your water. Go to the restroom. It helps you move around anyway because you do want to move around on the plane. And um, that is really helpful. And even when you get to your destination, make sure you keep yourself hydrated. They also say to not drink alcohol, to not drink caffeine, because that those chemicals can disrupt your circadian um, cycle. But of course, I mean, if I'm going to Rome or I'm going to Italy, I'm going to have coffee, you know, so try to drink a lot of water to combat the coffee and, um, you know, that, that should help you too. Drinking a lot of water helps a lot of things. It helps with headaches. I'll just share a quick little tip with you. When I was in Siena about five years ago, I had a really bad headache, like my head was going to explode. And I didn't have any Advil with me, and the hotel didn't have any Advil, and the lady said, drink this liter of water. And I'm like, okay. So I literally drank that liter of water, and my headache went away. It did, it went away. So the dehydration can really affect your body, affect your head, can affect your how you feel, and it also affects your digestion too. So that's something. So that's number three. So tip number four is sort of in alignment with the water is you want to, some people suggest intermittent fasting, like don't even eat on the plane um, because you want to get your body, you don't want to have too much food in your stomach, you don't want salty foods, you don't want sugary foods, so that when you get to your destination, your body can start the clock with nothing in its stomach. Me, I'm sorry, I like to eat. <laughs> I want to eat my food. Uh, I, I can't help it. I It would be a hard time for me not to eat. So, but that's a tip. That is a tip. I've never done that. It has worked for other people to not eat on the plane so that when you get there, you can do whatever it is at that time zone. So if you get there for breakfast, you can go to your hotel or go have to breakfast or have lunch or have dinner, whatever the time zone is that you're there, and you can just jump into the meal. I can always jump into any meal. So... <laughs> You know, and I don't have digest. Well, that's not true. So what they also say is because jet lags can cause constipation or it can cause digestion issues, that that's another reason why you should be careful about the food that you eat. I tend to get, I don't know if you've heard about this, but it's called airplane tummy, where your tummy starts getting bloated and starts feeling yucky. But I have found when I'm on the plane, I'll take some essential oils that digest zen. I'll have some of that. I could take a tablet and it really helps. Or I also have these papaya tablets that I've been taking, and those really help my stomach too. But um, So that's another tip around uh, being careful of the foods that you eat, and you want to avoid sugary foods, and you want to avoid salty foods. All of my favorite. <laughs> Let's get to the next tip. So tip number five is exercise. Um, there has been research that shows that when you go to a a new time zone and you're trying to fight off that jet lag is to exercise like go on a trail walk go walk around the city center but take a walk get the fresh air I already talked about the Sun how that can help uh, adjust your circadian rhythm so just walk do some exercise if you're in a hotel go to the gym if you want to go to the gym but that's an option you know you want to move your body you want to get it going you want to get in the motion of that and like I said a little while ago it's sort of like go out and have fun be in the Sun and drink a lot of water and so that's an important tip to remember is to move your body and that's also why it's a really good idea if you move on the plane as well when you're not sleeping because if you sit in front of the TV and watch movies all the time like I do I end up watching a lot of movies because I download them onto my phone and I watch my 
shows or I watch a movie or I watch it on the screen, you do want to make sure that you move and that you can stretch and that you can, you know, you know, you can move around on the plane. You can actually do squats. I was on an airplane once and there was a lady down by the restroom. She, would, she didn't have to go, but it was down at the back of the plane where there was extra space. She was, you know, doing squats and she was bending over and stretching and doing all this stuff. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I wish I were doing that, but I never ended up doing that. But those are some of the things that can help with jet lag. So tip number six is um, sometimes these um, homeopathic jet lag tablets work. I have taken them before and they seem to work for me. Um, I've taken this brand, but there are so many other brands that you can take. You could try them out. Um, that This particular brand, you had to take it like before you t take off and every hour and you just pop those in your mouth and you chew them and they seem to really work as well but I would um, recommend that you drink a lot of water as well because I think the water getting hydrated and keeping hydrated is one of the most important things that you can do that's what I feel anyway so those homeopathic uh, little tablets they work really well so tip number seven is you can use essential oils. So there are essential oils out there that can help you relax so that you can sleep on the plane. There are essential oils that can regulate your circadian rhythm like melatonin can. And there are essential oils that can help you be more alert. There are essential oils that can help your digestion when you're on the plane or even when you get to your destination. I'll give you just a few. I am not an essential oil expert. Um, you can easily find information online. Um, but for relaxation, for example, cedar wood and lavender can help you relax. Maybe that can help you sleep on the plane. But you want to make sure that you also have your eye mask when you're on the plane because Sometimes the windows are open and they don't always close them. And for me, I have a hard time sleeping with the light blaring in my face. So bring an eye mask. That's really helpful. Um, and then, let's see, uh, geranium and... Well, I know that geranium, I'm not sure what the other one is, sorry. But geranium, and I love the smell of geranium. It smells so good. Um, that can help regulate your clock your circadian clock that can help with that and then a peppermint of course if you smell peppermint or even take a little bit of it that can help you be alert you can add a little bit to your pulse you could smell it peppermint always just makes you uh, feel good and perk up and it's really good for your tummy and then I always have those digest zen like I told you about and I take those uh, with me on the plane because it's really been helpful as well so essential oils can really work for you if you wanted to bring those and kind of have a, a more well everything I've talked about is really a natural way but, but that's just another tip and lastly when you get to your hotel and you get to your destination, taking a bath before bedtime can be really helpful and especially if you use Epsom salts because Epsom salts have has magnesium in them and that can help be really calming and relaxing especially if you have lavender scented Epsom salts that would help relax you because the whole point is to try to sleep when it's dark wake up when it's light, eat at the right time in your time zone, and so that you can go and enjoy yourself. You're going to be somewhere new, whether it's there for a conference and you're giving a speech or going to learn something new, or whether you're in Europe or you're in Greece or wherever you are, you want to get yourself ready to go quickly. So I hope those tips have been helpful. I know that they've been helpful for me. And, um, you know, as we plan our trips for next year, my whole next year is already booked. And I hope I get some people that are going to come with me to Scotland. I'll be posting that soon. But anyway, have a great day. Thank you for joining me. If you can think about it, I would love it. If you would like my video, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any tricks or tips on... Um, your jet lag situation, if you've had it, have, has it been helpful? Has anything been helpful for you? 
Um, at least he behaved most of the time. Because now he's just like, no, you need to pay attention to me. <laughs> so anyway, Nico, <laughs> have a great day. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching.